can an AI copywriter really compete with a professional, real life human copywriter? I'm curious to see, let's dive in. Hey, I'm Carrie. welcome back to my channel or welcome for the very first time. All around, welcome. I'm Carrie Blogger, a career freelancer on Fiverr.com where I've been selling as a Fiverr Pro Verified Copywriter for about the past eight years. And in today's Freelance Friday video, I am reacting to several different examples of AI generated content. But before we get into that, we have to announce this week's blogger of the week. If you would like to be the blogger of the week, just like Jessica, all you have to do is drop a comment down below and you might get picked. Okay, so I did a similar video a couple months back. You can find that linked up here and then also in the description down below. I went head to head against a couple AI content writers and they absolutely failed it. It was a disaster. It was a pretty hilarious disaster, but they did not put up a fight at all. So the pitch that we're working with to just even the playing field here for comparison's sake is a client of mine that I just wrote a blog for the other day and they're called Aquascreen. You can find a link to them in the description down below. So first up, we've got copy.ai. I wanted to give the AI as much help as possible, as much context as possible. So the title that I gave it is testing for and removing six common water contaminants in US well water and public municipal water, including lead, pesticides, bacteria, and heavy metals. Not a blog title, not catchy, not interesting, but I wanted to give it as much information as possible. Let's see what they got. How can you tell if your water is good or bad? How do you know if it's safe to drink? I wouldn't personally put two questions back to back, but that's a style thing. There are more than 6,000 chemicals in water. Are they good chemicals? Is I... Uh, the next section says, my name is Joe Manconi. I am the founder and CEO of Water Renaissance, <laughs> a company, okay. That's not my client, so that sucks. Uh, testing for and removing six common water contaminants in US well water and public municipal water. That's so funny, they just literally copied what I said. Many well-intentioned persons become involved with this noble cause without fully comprehending its full scope or implications for their family and their local environment. That doesn't make any sense. It's not hard, you just test your water. Why does that make it sound like you get in over your head and there's no coming back? <laughs> However, many other persons mistakenly believe that simply because they live in an affluent nation such as the United States of America, that their well-being is guaranteed and their needs are insignificant. That's like a, that sentence did not go where I thought it was going. I don't know what the heck that paragraph's trying to say. Okay. Picking and choosing a credit card isn't easy. You have to consider what the, what? No, why? Okay, it's actually fairly well written. Uh, although some things didn't make sense or like I didn't really get what the point of it was. None of this is a blog. None of this is cohesive, but it's better than last time. <laughs> Let's look at the next one. This is by copysmith.ai. This one required me to do quite a bit of writing for it. So we'll see how well it kind of sticks to the script. Um, okay, so obviously the first section is what I wrote. That's Whatever. According to the water purification company Call Posts, there are 17 chemicals or disinfectants used in tap water. Uh, this includes disinfection by chlorination, chlorine dioxide, fluoride, chlorine based disinfectants, and benzalkonium chloride. Again, I mean, I know that the, the AI is just pulling from other information, but if I'm writing this for a client, they definitely don't want to be selling filters for another company. Uh, lead is still present in some water supplies despite the dramatic increase in use as a result of the Clean Water Act. Oh, I read that wrong. <laughs> Ooh. Lead is still present in water, some water supplies despite the dramatic decrease. Did I say increase? I was confused. Uh, you will encounter elevated levels in some water systems like municipal water supplies, while others like water used for faucet aerators are more economically affected by the effort to remove lead. There are many warnings about drinking or showering in contaminated water sources. These can help you to follow safe guidelines, but you may also need medical attention to be concerned about long-term effects. <laughs> These what? Uh, let's see how it ends. Heavy metal exposure is an important public health issue, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have a heavy metal poisoning case. For some heavy metals like arsenic, the historical evidence of increased health risks during the industrial revolution is shaky and reliant on multiple lab tests. I don't know what any of that means. Heavy metal exposure is an important public health issue. Cool. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you have a heavy metal poisoning case. 
I think that just like is a spun sentence. Like they're trying to say that even if someone doesn't get poisoned, you can still have like an issue with contamination, which is a good point, but though that makes no sense. For some heavy metals like arsenic, the historical evidence of increased health risks during the industrial revolution is shaky and reliant on multiple lab tests. I don't know what that means either. Uh, fortunately, finding a water supply that tests within safety margins is possible. That's a good last sentence, but it is the complete opposite of the point that you should be testing your water at home. Third, any word, what's up, any word? Uh, I again had to write the intro paragraph and the subheaders, the sections. Harmful bacteria. The one thing I am careful about with my new little one is what she comes into contact with. So I always have some sort of pre-treat treatment going on at home. Why is this written in first person as a mother? Why is that? Why? There were plenty of warnings about cooking surfaces being hazardous places without much work put into them. What are you talking about, my guy? There was mention about raw chicken ju <laughs> juices dripping from your hands onto porous surfaces such as countertops where there may already be harmful bacteria present after hours of handling meat products during prep work can result in cross-contamination with those bacteria present on food becoming more susceptible to bacterial growth. Finish your sentence at some point, please. Let's see if it continues um, cohesively with the next section. In testing for contaminants, nitrite Oh, nitrates and nitrites are not uncommon to find. Nitrates and nitrites naturally occur in water supplies, but concentrations over 10 milligrams per liter can become toxic to humans. That uh, amount is wrong. Uh, removal of these chemicals is not possible for home use. Commercial treatment by professionals is needed if consumption is desired. That's not what I read. I read that reverse osmosis and distillation can remove nitrates and nitrites. That's not what I read. <laughs> Reading the whole thing should not feel like it was written by different authors about different topics. <laughs> All right, and then last but not least, we've got AI article writer by Wright Sonic. This one required pretty much the same information. I put in that long article title, but it wouldn't let me give it the whole thing. Um, this said, writing may take 30 seconds per section. I started this generator <laughs> probably two hours ago, and uh, it still is thinking real hard. So you've already seen the bad stuff. Here's what I came up with. Widespread water contamination often makes headline news, but untested water and long-term exposure are even more dangerous. In 2015, the Natural Resources Defense Council found that 77 million Americans drank water that failed to meet federal health standards. Across the U.S., many municipal water suppliers fail to properly test the water or report results at all. An at-home water test kit can provide peace of mind and keep water providers more accountable. Whether you drink public tap water like 87% of U.S. households or you have access to a private well, contamination is a constant concern. Discover six of the most common drinking water contaminants and learn what to do if your water test kit comes back positive. Number one, harmful bacteria. Bacteria can cause severe gastrointestinal issues, and the risks are even higher for people with compromised or weak immune systems. A water test kit can identify the presence of E. coli, Shigella, Klebsiella, Salmonella, and more. The presence of bacteria is often an indicator of something worse. When coliform bacteria like E. coli registers in a water test kit, that may be a sign of sewage contamination and other disease-causing pathogens. Bacterial growth can occur in the water system and pipes itself or build up on faucets over time. Number two, nitrates and nitrites. Nitrogen contamination is most common in well water, and it typically stems from fertilized grass or crops, livestock manure, and improper sewage disposal. Nitrates can easily leach into the groundwater after heavy rains or over irrigation. Nitrates are colorless, odorless, and tasteless, so water testing kits are the only way to monitor safe limits. According to the EPA, public tap water cannot exceed one milligram per liter, and well water is limited to 10 milligrams per liter. Even with a higher allowance, a U.S. geological survey found that 9% of tested wells exceeded the maximum limit between 1970 and 1992. Nitrate contamination can cause severe illness and death in infants. Methemoglobinemia, or baby blue syndrome, is a severe condition that pregnant or nursing mothers and young families need to actively be aware of and testing for. Number three, heavy metals. Measuring the pH balance of your tap water can reveal the presence of heavy metals. With a low pH, highly acidic water can corrode metal pipes and cause lead, copper, or iron to flake off. 
On the other hand, high pH water often indicates the contaminants are dissolved in higher concentrations. Arsenic is a naturally occurring mineral, but drinking water should never have more than three parts per billion. There is often a correlation between high pH levels and arsenic contamination. Number four, excess chlorine. Chlorine is used to safely disinfect tap water, but elevated levels can be toxic or even fatal. In high concentrations, chlorine can dull your hair, create a hazy or cloudy color, and cause the water to smell like chemicals. Even when applied in the proper amount, chlorine can cause a toxic byproduct called trihalomethanes, THM. The EPA allows THMs up to 100 parts per billion. It's important to note that the chemical can also be inhaled during showering, and it's not only a drinking water issue. Chemical pesticides, number five. Atrazine and simazine are two of the most common problematic pesticides in water. Atrazine is most commonly identified with water test kits in the South and Midwest, but its use is widespread across the U.S. The chemical is an endocrine disruptor that can interfere with hormones, and the maximum water limit is three parts per billion. Simazine is also frequently found in well water and tap water. This pesticide causes central nervous system issues, many types of cancer, and birth defects. Long-term exposure has also been linked to blood disorders when levels exceed four parts per billion. Number six, lead in water. There is no safe level of lead in drinking water, and the toxic effects are most pronounced in children. Even if your home is less than 40 years old and your municipal water provider has committed to removing lead pipes, you may still be at risk. Lead is commonly found in faucets, fittings, and other fixtures. Aquascreen is the world's most sensitive rapid test, and it can detect lead in water down to 3.8 parts per billion. Our rapid lead test kit is five times more sensitive than the EPA action level. Next steps and safety measures. For elevated bacteria levels, boiling water and UV sterilization are good options. However, boiled water is not always healthy. Did you know that boiling water will actually increase elevated nitrate levels? Reverse osmosis is one of the easiest ways to clean your water and remove contamination, including pesticides, lead, nitrates, and heavy metals. Contamination can happen at any time. It's important to regularly test your drinking water with Aquascreen's trusted at-home kit. If your test comes back positive, stop drinking the tap water and alert your local authorities as soon as possible. And that entire blog very cleverly included several target keywords, including water test kit, well water, tap water, drinking water, lead in water, pesticides in water, and contamination. Even if uh, robots are trying to take your job, I know that's a threat, but uh, remember you are worth more than your workload and let's get back to work. <laughs>